Today we're at a new construction project where all the walls are exposed because the drywall hasn't been hung yet. And we're gonna do a boric air treatment or a borate treatment on the wood because it's the best time to treat the wood to prevent all wood destroying insects such as termites. And the good thing about a borate treatment, it lasts forever. For today's treatment, we're gonna need a one gallon Chapin Premier pump sprayer. Uh, optional is the use of a four gallon battery backpack sprayer. This will allow you not to be pumping and allow automated spraying through the whole process, which will save you a lot of time. We'll need a five gallon mixing bucket. We will need a jug of water, two gallons. We will need safety equipment, which includes Tyvek coveralls, gloves, eye protection, and a respirator if you're gonna get into crawl spaces. And we suggest that you mix the product with a mixing wand with a corded or cordless drill. And today we're gonna to use marking dye in order to mark the product so we know where we've sprayed. Okay, so just to explain what we're gonna do here today is we're gonna treat all this exposed wood from the sill plate up to two feet high with Boracare. And the reason we wanna do this is this is where wood destroying insects enter such as termites. So we're gonna to wanna to make sure the sill plate is really treated well and spray really well around anything like an outlet cover, but make sure we cover these outlets so that we don't get any overspray inside the outlets. So before we get started, the first thing we're gonna to need to do is clear any of this debris away like sawdust because Boracare not only sits on the surface, but really soaks in and absorbs into the wood. And that's what makes boric air so strong is that it actually absorbs into this wood and that's why it lasts forever. What we have here is we have an electrical box or low voltage box for electricity or data. And we don't wanna get any boric air in here, especially since we're using the dye. So I'm just gonna use this piece of material to cover that up. You can use tin foil, anything you want, and just stick it in there and cover the wires so that when the workers come back to pull them out, they won't disturb anything or get anything on their hands. So one question we get a lot is, how do we know how much boric care do we need to buy to complete our job? Well, this is how you figure it out. We're gonna use a measuring wheel and we're gonna measure the lineal feet of the entire house. After you've measured all exterior walls, interior walls, interior rooms, you're gonna come up with one figure. You're gonna take that figure, divide it by 100, and that's exactly how many gallons of boric air you'll need to complete your job. Now that we've got our calculations of how much we need, we're gonna go ahead and mix up some boric air. Boric air is mixed at a one-to-one -one ratio. So we're gonna mix one gallon of water to one gallon of boric air. That's gonna give us two gallons of finished product, which treats 100 lineal feet. The first step is I'm gonna put three quarters of a gallon of water into this bucket. After I get three quarters of a gallon in the bucket, I'm gonna start entering the boric air into the bucket. So now I'm gonna put my drill in. We can see how thick boric air is. It's extremely thick. So that's why we want to agitate with mechanical. Okay, so I started with three quarters of a gallon, so I still have a quarter of a gallon left. So what I want to save that last quarter for is doing a triple rinse. So what I'm going to do, is pour a little bit of this water into the one gallon bucket. Um, because this product is so thick and it sticks to the sides and the walls, then we wanna shake the product up. We wanna get all the product we can out of this one gallon bucket. So we're gonna triple rinse it. So we're gonna do this three times. Nice and clean. So now we want to continue mixing our boric air. 
So today we're gonna add a marking die to our two gallon finish solution so we can see exactly where we've sprayed. And this particular marking die is mixed one half ounce per gallon. So we have two finished gallons. I'm gonna add one ounce of marking die. We're ready to add the product to our sprayer. Just a note on marking dye. The marking dye will dye this sprayer, this plastic sprayer, and the dye, no matter how well you try to clean it, will remain in this sprayer. That's why we recommend using a cheaper sprayer, something that you can just dispose of after the job is done. I'm gonna fill it up to the one gallon mark. Close our sprayer. And now we're ready to get started. Right here we have a piece of mahogany that's against the wood that we're getting ready to treat and because we have the dye in it, we don't want this dye to get on this finished piece of wood. There's going to be other places in the house where you're going to have similar situations and so what we're going to do is we're going to use a piece of cardboard to shield this wood so that we don't stain it. Getting ready to spray and again I want you to remember we're spraying two feet up, we're spraying all exposed wood surfaces so this plywood gets sprayed as well and we want to make sure this still gets treated and we're gonna spray until it's really good and damp. So now we've sprayed one section of wall. I'm gonna go back through and look for sections I might have missed or sections that might be light and hit them again real quick. All right, normally in this situation, we'd now be ready to treat the outside, but let's take a look at what we have outside. Well, when we get outside, we can see the siding has already been installed. When this happens, you need to do a second application on the interior wall. You can only do a second application per the label after 20 minutes. So while we wait 20 minutes or 30 for that to dry, let's go ahead and take a look at some other situations. So here's the area that we showed you before where I shielded the mahogany from getting overspray on it. So what we're going to need to do in order to treat this wood is we're going to have to use a paintbrush and apply with a paintbrush so that we don't get it on that finished product of mahogany. This product is brushable and rollable, so when you get into a situation like this where you can't get up against it with the sprayer, you can use a brush or a roller. Okay, so I'm gonna use a piece of cardboard to cover up this mahogany that we just cut in with a brush, and I'm gonna spray this corner. And as you can see, there's a good gap in here, so I wanna put the sprayer right in that gap and put a lot of material in there to make sure I get everything covered really good in there. And then I'll just continue spraying the rest of this void. And as I get closer to this right side, what I'm gonna wanna do is switch my piece of cardboard shield over to this side so I keep the overspray off the mahogany and spray these voids and continue spraying this corner. Again, outlets, we wanna make sure we spray extra heavy around and spray that sill plate really, really good because if we get wood destroying insects or termites, that's where they're gonna come from. Okay, now we're getting ready to spray around this window. And before we do that, again, we wanna make sure all the debris is cleared off all the surfaces that are gonna be sprayed so that the uh, board care can really soak in and penetrate the wood. So we wanna make sure all the dust is really away from the bottom of this sill plate and away from the top of the sill plate. And as you'll notice, there's some finished wood on these windows that we don't want the marking dye to stain. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use our trusty cardboard shield to shield off that and then take the sprayer and spray underneath the window. So we finished with this room and what I want you to do is pay close attention to windows, door frames, electrical outlets, and voids where two by fours aren't exactly together. Spray them really well. And then you're gonna to wanna to repeat this process for the rest of the structure.
This is where we first started our treatment this morning. And what we're gonna do is go back and put a second coating on this because remember on the outside of this wall, the siding has already been installed. And when the siding has already been installed, the label calls for two coats to be done on the inside. So we're gonna go ahead and give this our second treatment. It's been way past 20 minutes, plenty of time to dry. We found a section of the house where the siding has yet to be installed. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and treat this while we still have access to it. We're gonna pull back this Tyvek, treat underneath this window, and that way we only have to treat the inside of this wall one time. Well, that's all there is to doing your own wood borate treatment. If you have any other questions, please give our customer service staff a call. Make sure to subscribe to our channel by clicking this button. Look at our other product videos by clicking on this playlist and check out our other DIY videos by clicking this playlist. And it's that easy with the professional help of domyown.com.